Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Nina, otherwise known as Central Pluto, and today we are doing love predictions for fire signs. So Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries, we are doing your love readings today. So let's just go ahead and get started. This is going to apply to your sun, moon, rising, and Venus. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. Before I get started, please take these readings with a grain of salt. Not everything is going to resonate. It's a general reading, so take what applies, leave what doesn't. It's okay if it doesn't resonate with you. Let's just go ahead and get started. I'm doing Leo first. <clears throat> and then we'll go Sagittarius, Aries. So let's get into it, Leos. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. What is in store for you in your love life for the next three weeks? What is in store for Leos in their love lives for the next three weeks? That was quick. Well, we have this four of wands that came out, so that's really good, but I'm gonna keep on shuffling because I didn't feel ready. <laughs> so celebration, which is really good. Feeling at peace, stability. What is in stores for Le what is in store for Leo's in their love life? What do they need to know about their love life? What should they be expecting in their romantic lives? What is in store for Leo's in their love life? take them we'll take them bottom of the uh, deck is the eight of wands let's, so let's see what we, we have a lot of cards that came out so we have the five of wands so conflict or competition <clears throat> the hierophant which is commitment contracts um marriage that sort of thing we have the queen of swords who got this card i think Libra's got this card. We have the King of Swords reversed. Okay. And then we have the Moon reversed. And then the Eight of Wands at the bottom of the deck. And under that is... Well, I'm putting the Eight of Wands in the actual spread. And now at the bottom of the deck is the Four of Wands, which was what I mentioned earlier. And then under that is the Emperor. So Aries energy. We also have Taurus Capricorn energy with this Hierophant. And Pisces Cancer Energy with the Moon Reverse. <clears throat> so, Leo, it seems as though there's a little bit of conflict. There's a little bit of tension between you and someone else. And it feels like for some of you, this has to do with a committed relationship of yours. Not only because I have the Hierophant, but because I have the Queen of Swords and the King of Swords Reverse. So, this is a couple here. <clears throat> And it seems as though the King of Swords is not using his logic um, or intelligence or intellect the best way he can. It's almost like this King of Swords is being a little bit manipulative, a little bit conniving, a little bit um, like trying to twist your words, perhaps even trying to gaslight you in some sort of way, like trying to do anything. It's almost as though this King of Swords reversed is throwing away all sense of morality, all sense of moral code or honor that they have, right? Because it feels like, because normally the King of Swords upright is someone who upholds a sense of honor, a sense of morality. You know, they, they uphold a moral code. They like to do things a certain way because, not necessarily because of pride, but just because they believe in that. They believe that they have to uphold that sense of honor, right? <clears throat> and having it reversed shows me that they're kind of just throwing that all the way. And kind of reaching to get some sort of reaction out of you, but the Queen of Swords upright is telling me that you're not really giving any sort of reaction. And I feel that this King of Swords is really revealing themselves, moon reverse. They're really revealing their intentions, how they really feel. They're really revealing how 
not necessarily how bad of a person they can be, but they're revealing just the way that they are. They're revealing their true selves is what it feels like. And with this Queen of Swords, I feel like you're just sitting back and watching. You're not really reacting. You're just coolly accepting everything, observing, watching as this king squirms and tries to get a rise out of you because there is this conflict and whatever this conflict is <clears throat> or a competition or ego battle whatever this is they want to win they want to feel like they are in the right they want to feel as though they are victorious in some sort of way they want to make you feel small they want to make you feel they they personally want to feel big and bad and that they're the coolest person on the block and they can get oops let me move a little bit more in the middle <laughs> that, that they can get whatever they want and they don't have to abide by this honor or moral code the way that they did it's almost like they're playing dirty and it's ugly as fuck <laughs> it's very manipulative but the thing about that though is because of the fact that they are throwing everything to the side any sort of like beliefs that they normally uphold because of that and because of the fact that they are so caught up in the moment and so caught up in their ego they are making very messy moves and they're making it easy for you to objectively view the situation there's this to me seems leo is that this king of swords reversed is taking things personally and roles can be reversed here maybe you are the king of swords reversed and the other person is the queen of swords maybe you're the one trying to trying to throw shots trying to get a rise out of your partner or someone that you're dating or someone that you're talking to Whatever the case is, reverse the roles however way you need to, however way, however way it resonates. But to me, this King of Swords reversed is just like, he's throwing out anything, you know, throwing out as much bait as he can to get something, for you to bite anything, and you're just not. I don't see you doing that. <clears throat> and I feel that, especially this week because there's a lot going on with like relationships and like Venus and Pisces and it's I think it's like making a it's making a sextile to Uranus I believe and then I think Venus is making another aspect to Saturn it's a very minor aspect but it's one nonetheless and it's causing like friction and tension so the, I feel that this week is really going to be a very telling time um <clears throat> as to who somebody really is i think it's going to show a lot about people's true colors especially in your romantic relationships leo so keep your eyes out um this king of swords reverse normally i read the king of swords upright as having a plan having a strategy when i think of the king, king of swords i think of someone who's playing chess and when you were playing chess you have to think like 10 steps ahead having this reverse they're not thinking 10 steps ahead. They're not thinking about that at all. They're throwing any sort of plan, any sort of strategy out the window and they're just going for it. You know, it's that Uranus energy of just like acting impulsively, very recklessly, very unpredictably, but it's not even working out in their favor and they might actually end up regretting it and later, right? And it feels like, it's, it just feels like an ego battle within this relationship. It feels so much like an ego battle and with this eight of wands, this talks to how this to me talks about how either one everything is moving very quickly events are happening very quickly things are changing up things are kind of unpredictable that sort of thing the eight of wands right under the queen of swords can also be how you might need to make a decision very quickly in terms of what's going on here <clears throat> You might need to move forward quick you might need to be or you might want to make a decision quickly in which case i would really encourage you to use your logic to use strategy to step aside from your emotions from a little bit step aside from any sort of pride that you might be holding on to and just look at things objectively look at things with an unbiased view and see how this person is literally just reaching to get a reaction out of you okay this is a this is a game of chess and this person this king of swords isn't playing very well so you have the advantage here okay they might be trying to abuse their power in some sort of way they might be trying to hold something over you but nah <laughs> nah bro like all this is doing is revealing themselves revealing the true colors 
and revealing, I guess, the foundations of this relationship, Rela revealing how this relationship might not be entirely stable. Because I have the moon reverse, right? Which is kind of coming free or liberating oneself of the confusion or kind of breaking through some sort of illusion. And we have the Hierophant. So it could be that at some point you were under the illusion that this was a stable, happy, fulfilling relationship, that this is something that you wanted, that this is, that maybe you wanted something very traditional or it met societal expectations in some sort of way. But the moon reverse is kind of revealing how you might not, might not entirely want that. You might not be drawn to that in some sort of way. You're just kind of over it is what it seems like leo and again you reverse the roles however way you need to to you know have this fit your situation whether you are the one who's acting like the king of swords reversed or the partner is acting like this and if you are acting this way i need you to check your attitude bro <laughs> i really need you to check your attitude what's what's with all of this what's with the conflict what's with the with the with the below the belt jabs and like trying to prove a point because I promise you, you're not big and bad <laughs> by doing all of this stuff. If anything, you're revealing your true colors. So what's up? Like, what's really good? Is <laughs> Like, what's really, really, really good? That's what I want to know. <clears throat> um, let's go ahead and clarify. Is there anything that I want to clarify? Mm, let's clarify this King of, this King of Swords reversed. Let's clarify this King of Swords reverse. So why are they acting this way? Right? Why why all the sudden conflict? Why do we have all this conflict? What brought upon this conflict? Was it jealousy? Was it what was this? What is this? Why are they acting this way? Why is the King of Swords reverse acting this way? That was way too many cards, brother. I'm not doing that. <laughs> <clears throat> Why is the King of Swords acting this way? Oops. Girl. Okay. Why is the King of Swords acting this way? Mm. they really thought that they could manipulate you into a into some sort of cycle is what it seems like i have the magician <clears throat> and then i have judgment so i think that they see how powerful that you are and i think they underestimated you and now that they see that you are the superior one, they're mad, you know, they're pressed, they have a big ego on them, and they don't like the fact that you are supposedly doing better than them in their eyes, you know, they feel inferior to you. And so they're trying to do something to, to prove to themselves that you are not better than them when really, you know, that's just digging a bigger hole. That's just digging a, a, a bigger grave for themselves, you know? <laughs> you know, they're just making their bed so that they can lie in it. <clears throat> so it's just crazy. This really, you know, they're really realizing how powerful you are and they're envious of that. That's really what it feels like. You know, they're in competition with you. Five of Wands, they're definitely in competition with you. And... You know, they might have entered this relationship with you or this dynamic, whatever this is for you. They might have entered this dynamic with you um, because they never expected you to surpass them in some way. However way this might um, resonate, whether you surpass them in terms of career or in making money or in school, whatever this is, they never thought that you would surpass them. And the fact that you have literally infuriates their ego and so it's like a judgment moment it's almost like a wake-up call for them but the wake-up call they're not taking it in the right way they're not approaching it in the right way they're not they're not using this as motivation to do better for themselves and not even to like be in in competition with you but like to do better for themselves and to go out of their way to to be a better person to 
to explore different options in terms of either career or school, whatever the case is. You know, they were comfortable, it feels like, in their own bubble. And they see that you are not going to allow yourself to be comfortable in one state. You are going to continue pushing and moving and opening yourself to new options, to new skills and resources and whatnot. And so they hate that. And that's so funny. And so I feel, I feel that all of this is just coming to light, Leo. So all you gotta do is just sit back and watch and be observant observant and watch them literally just spiral and watch them just ruin the relationship themselves like you literally don't even have to do anything you can just watch them and see how everything just begins to dismantle so <laughs> that was very easy to read leo honestly like that was quick so if this resonates with you, let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your feedback or anything else that you would like to share. Um, give the video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends, family, loved ones, or anyone else who needs to hear this message. If you want to book a personal reading with me, you can do so at sinfulpluto.com. If you want to find me on social media, you can do so on Twitter and Instagram at sinfulpluto. And with that being said, darlings, I will talk to you later. Bye. Hello Sagittarius, how are you? I hope that you are doing so well. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get started and see what is in store for you in the next three weeks in your love life. This is going to apply to Sagittarius Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So let's just go ahead and get started, lovelies. Alright, what does Sagittarians need to know about their love life for the next three weeks? What is in store for them romantically? What should they be expecting? What do they need to know? What should be brought to their awareness? King of Cups, oof, love that, love that shit. Ten of Cups, King of, or Queen of Swords reversed. This was in the Leo reading, but I promise you, I was shuffling very well before getting to you guys. I was bridge shuffling and shit, so not supposed to be there. We have the Chariot reversed. Eight of Wands and Strength. Okay, some of you could be dealing with the Leo. Some of you could definitely be doing, dealing with Leo, perhaps. And then at the bottom of the deck, we have the Three of Wands. Under that is the Knight of Cups, and under that is Death Reversed. Okay. So, Sagittarius, what's going on with you guys? <clears throat> okay, so you could be coming through as the King of Cups here, emotionally stable, very emotionally and spiritually aligned. You know, you could be doing very well for yourselves, actually. I feel that some of you have been learning to get into the habit of journaling or really sitting with your feelings which i actually really enjoy i really like that i feel that you have been emotionally providing for yourself there is a sense of emotional imma uh, immaturity there's a sense of emotional maturity that i see from you in this card which i really love and we have the Ten of Cups, which tells me that you're actually really happy. Oops, that you're actually really happy in your life right now. You're like you're really good. Oh wait, <laughs> this is supposed to be upright. You're really good. You're really happy in your life. Emotional fulfillment, and you're very content. I feel as though you have manifested this for yourself because you have reached that sense of emotional maturity. You have gotten very, very good about handling things very well and taking accountability and looking at things from another perspective putting yourself in other people's shoes and not being so i think stuck on or caught up in the belief that you are always right i think that you have learned to be empathetic and compassionate and you have learned um emotional intelligence which is really beautiful and really awesome and i i see that extending into your love life however we do have this queen of swords and i feel as though this is someone from the past who is coming back especially with the chariot reverse which talks about regression 
and going back <clears throat> and I, and I feel as though there might be someone in the past who is coming back up who has felt um scorned by you or smited is that the word I don't think smited is the word but they feel scorned they feel uh, betrayed right maybe in the past before you have reached this level of emotional maturity there was someone that you really hurt or that you had a kind of a, a painful ending with right and the queen of swords reverse is someone who was very hurt and it seems to me as though this was someone who was very emotionally invested in you and it could have been that maybe you weren't all that emotionally invested in them whatever the case is right there's so many scenarios that could have popped up that has led to this person feeling this way but the th the point is is that the queen of swords reversed she feels scorned she feels betrayed she feels hurt right she has invested herself emotionally into you only to be hurt right and it could have been that when you guys have met she already had i'm, I'm saying she because it's a queen you know queen of swords but I, I it literally can be anyone on the gender spectrum you know i'm just saying she for purposes of whatever <laughs> you get what i'm saying but um you know when you guys met it could have been that she had already grown a bit calloused right from her past Maybe she was very insecure and when you guys met, you helped her in some sort of way. And maybe she clung on to you emotionally and maybe that's what drove you away, right? Maybe that's part of the reason why you were driven away is the fact that she was really clingy or relied on you or somehow codependent on you for something. I don't know. Whatever it is. And if the situation is that you ended up leaving, it feels as though the last bit of warmth in her heart faded you know it feels as though her eye her heart has gone ice cold from that last experience and now it's almost like she's out for a vengeance and she has gone she has become very calloused and very dry and cold and she has become the ice queen and she is out for revenge she wants you to feel the way you made her felt right and it might not even be specifically or not it might not even be just the way you made her feel but how others have made you have made her feel and it's just all an accumulation of how people have perhaps taken advantage of her in some way or have just really hurt her and not taking her taken her feelings into consideration right <clears throat> and so in order to protect herself, in order to to survive and to get through it all, she had to become this ice queen. And it feels as though she might be coming back either because she wants to hurt you back, because she wants to make a point, because she wants to see you regress into your old ways, whatever this is, right? It just feels like there's a blast from the past. And in terms of your love life, I feel as though this is a very strong challenge to see if you have actually mastered or have really learned to properly handle your emotions and how to properly handle situations, okay, with emotional maturity and with compassion and empathy, right, with this king of swords. That's kind of what it feels like. This is kind of like a testing ground for you to see how far you have actually come. Is this progress all real or is it just a facade, you know? It's putting, it's putting things to a test. And, you know, that's why we have strength here. There is a sense of discipline, a very strong self-discipline that you need to be taking on when it comes to this queen of swords reverse because she might be trying to throw things throw shots at you you know be very petty do things that have previously triggered you and made you react right but she doesn't know who you have grown into so like i said this is a testing ground for you sagittarius to see if you have actually grown and a lot of self-discipline is required in order for you to maintain the lifestyle that you are living into in order to 
prove that you have actually grown as a person and to just self-discipline in general in terms of like handling this person and i have the eight of wands which tells me that you might be inclined to you know throw shots back to you know make very impulsive decisions and to do things that kind of basically reverting to old ways right especially with this reversed a chariot it's like you're going back very fast that's what it is like very strong movement but in the past a lot of regression and so you need to fight against this chariot reversed fight against the fight against reverting back to these old habits these old ways of being this old attitude this old behavior and allow yourself to move forward in the right direction to continue keeping your eyes on the prize which is essentially this ten of pentacles or not the ten of pentacles the ten of cups right and it like i said it's going to require a lot of self-discipline and it's going to require a lot of compassion and empathy and detaching yourself from your ego so that you can handle things properly right that's really what it feels like for me uh sagittarius when it comes to handling this queen of swords a lot of self-discipline honestly and we have this three of wands <clears throat> which talks all about like exploration broadening your horizons and it's at the bottom of the deck so this is the overall energy so i feel that this is um a a moment for expansion and broadening your views right I feel as though this is, I also, maybe for the three of wands, this could also be just the fact that like, there might have been some sort of like third party situation going on in the past. And maybe that's why the queen of swords feels um like scorned, but I don't really feel it's this way. I just feel like this is just a new experience, a new, a new challenge to conquer, essentially. That's really what it feels like. And I feel like this is just a really big learning experience for you to teach you. I feel like this is just a huge learning experience to see how you handle things and how you can improve and things along those lines. That's really what it feels like. Yeah, two of cups reverse. So this is like the breakup or the disharmonious relationship and how there's a need for, um, excuse me, how there's a need for compassion, a little bit more self-love and things along those lines. So let's see, what other messages do we have for Sagittarius and their love lives? What other message do we have for Sagittarius? Any other messages that we have for Sag? Oops. Yeah, Queen of Wands reverse, bro. Like, someone has been scorned. I'm not, these are too many cards. Queen of Wands reversed and the Four of Swords reversed. Like, this person is mad. She's heated. Queen of Wands reversed and the Queen of Swords reversed. Like I said, there might have been a, um, a third-party situation, but it just feels like this person is mad and she's not getting an effort. Like, she's not thinking clearly. With the, the Four of Swords reversed, she's not thinking clarity. clearly. There is a very, there's a lack of clarity in the situation a lack of knowing how to approach things. There's a lack of meditation. The energy is very, very scattered. And we also have the Four of Cups reversed, which is a strong pessimism, looking at things half glass empty sort of vibe. Also further scattered energy. Like, it just, it's coming from a place of ego and a, not even ego, but just from a place of pain. That's what it is. This person is coming from a place of pain and she, wants to take that out on someone else and you have to be the bigger person king of cups like you really do have to be the bigger person in this situation sagittarius like you really do you need to allow yourself to really handle things maturely otherwise they might bite you in the butt okay so that's what i have for you really <laughs> that's all i have to say i hope this resonates i hope it was helpful in some way for you sagittarius let me know in the comments down below any feedback that you have for me uh give the video a thumbs up share with your friends family loved ones or anyone who needs to hear this if you want to book a personal reading with me you can do so at simplepluto.com if you want to find me on social media you can do so on twitter and instagram at simplepluto so with that being said i'll talk to you later bye
Hello Aries, how are you? I hope that you are doing so well. <laughs> Let's just go ahead and get started and see what's in store for you in your love life for the next three weeks. This is going to apply to Aries Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. So keep that in mind. So let's get started, Aries. What's going on with you? What's going on? What do you need to know? What do Aries need to know about their love lives for the next three weeks? What is in store for them? What should they be expecting romantically? What should Aries be expecting romantically for the next three weeks? What do they need to know? What should be brought to their awareness? Nine of Swords. Okay, that's this is the card that fell out. So Nine of Swords, a lot of overthinking, a lot of anxiety, paranoia, working yourself up, worrying about the future a little bit too much. We have death. So a need for transformation, a need for change, and you might be you might be a little um, wary of that. We have the Devil Reverse, Capricorn energy. So we have Scorpio and Capricorn energy. Um, you might need to be freeing yourself from some sort of bad habit or toxic relationship. We have the King of Cups, King of Swords, and a Five of Swords. Yep. Petty drama, brother. Petty drama. At the bottom of the deck, we have the Five of Cups reversed. So there's a lot of healing that needs to take place for you, Aries. Two Kings. Okay. I wonder if some of you are in some sort of like love triangle because <clears throat> we have the nine of swords which i think is definitely your energy overthinking not really knowing what to do not knowing what to expect right and we have the king of cups and the king of swords which is two distinct masculine energies and they don't necessarily have to be men like literally anyone of any gender you know whatever dynamic this is but i just feel as though there might be some sort of love triangle here and it almost kind of feels like an ego battle for some reason and there's just a lot of overthinking there's a lot of stress maybe you don't know who to choose maybe there's someone who is very um compassionate emotionally providing very empathetic very loving very uh almost like capricorn vibes whenever i think of the king of cups i think of Ca cancer capricorn vibes or Cancer Capricorn Axis, where Cancer is like the maternal, sort of loving, nurturing, emotionally um, nurturing, emotionally nurturing sort of person, whereas Capricorn is a more materially nurturing and loving sort of person. You know, they have a lot of love, but they don't, they don't necessarily gush about it. They're the silent type of person they love in silence is what it feels like and then we have the king of swords someone very analytical someone who thinks 10 steps ahead someone very intelligent has a moral code um has some sort of honor code as well that they that they choose to follow an honorable person and then we have the five of swords which is petty drama something dragging out for far too long and with the nine of swords it definitely feels as though the situation has been dragging out for far far too long whatever this is and it could be that the king of cups and the king of swords is you and another person it doesn't necessarily have to be like a love triangle um but yeah the nine of swords and the five of swords dude there's a lot of overthinking there's a lot of petty drama here and a lot of stress about this and it's almost like you're paralyzing yourself in this situation to the point that no progress can really be made from this and there's a need for change to 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 occur to take place and but there's there's just a lot of pessimism here because we have the five of cups reversed that's a lot of pessimism you know crying over spilled milk this is a lot of thinking about all of the negative and not focusing on ways in which you can heal yourself so and with the devil here reversed this talks about needing to break away from complacency needing to break away from this feeling of being paralyzed needing to break away from unhealthy habits toxic relationships or toxic habits beliefs um opinions whatever this is i want to look more into this what exactly is this 
it's it feels as though you know there's maybe there's competition between the king and the, the the two kings right but the thing is is that there's really not going to be any real winner because it's an ego battle it's not not anything that's that holds any sort of weight with this five of swords it's petty drama it's a petty competition it doesn't really help anyone or anything so aries why do you feel this way why do we have this nine of swords here can we clarify this why do we have the Nine of Swords? Why is there so much overthinking? Why is there anxiety? Why is there stress? You might be like losing sleep over the situation, which is really interesting. So why do we have this? Why do we have this Nine of Swords? All right, there's a card that fell out. Bottom of the deck is the Queen of Swords. Okay. Five of Wands reverse. So you want to run away from the conflict or this is an unresolved conflict. Interesting. Hmm. All right. So you're overthinking about unresolved conflict and it might be, be and it might be between two separate individuals or maybe this is the same person, although I don't think so. But there's an unresolved conflict and maybe that's why you're overthinking so much, right? you're required to be logical to be unbiased the queen of swords this is something that you need to be thinking about this is something that you have been thinking about a lot <clears throat> and you are required to be objective but i don't know if you can do that for yourself right now it doesn't seem like you can it seems like you're really overthinking i feel that you are putting on the image that you are calm and collected and you know exactly what to do and you're not emotionally so invested in this but it really does feel like you are let's clarify this death card why is death here why is death here why what transformation needs to take place what is this death card why is death here maybe this just talks about the end of a situation that needs to take place why is death here? Bro, <laughs> why is death here, honey? What is the purpose of death being here? What is the transformation that needs to take place? All right, I think I got two cards. The bottom of the deck is the Fool. Yeah, there has to be some sort of new beginning. Six of Wands and the Two of Wands. Okay, so Two of Wands is exploring your options. <laughs> There's definitely a decision that you have to be, oops. There's definitely a decision that you have to make with this Two of Wands and we have the two, the two Kings here. So you have to choose between these two. You can't have both. I get it now okay okay so aries what it seems to me it is it does seem it's i don't want okay for some of you it could literally be a triangle a love triangle for others of you this is a conflict between the past and the present or the past and the future so two of wands to me talks about a choice that has to be made between sticking with your comfort zone versus going towards something new exploring something new right so it's okay that's bitch, that makes a lot of sense Okay, 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 got it. And then the Six of Wands just talks about recognition and acknowledgement. Um, that's really what this talks about. <laughs> Acknowledging a, situ a situation, putting the spotlight on a situation rather than running away from it. Okay, that, okay, 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 okay. Okay, so for some of you, this Five of Wands reverse can also just talk about you running away from the conflict. Although for some of you, it could be unresolved conflict and something that has been going on and dragging out for a while, which makes sense because of the Five of Swords. But Five of Wands reversed also just talks about like you just running away from conflict in general. Okay, so two of, two of Wands is you need to make a decision between what is comfortable and what is new. And I think that's what's going on here. You know, for some, you know, reverse the roles however way you need to. But the King of Cups to me could be maybe, for example, this is your comfort zone. 
maybe this emotional person is your comfort zone and the adventure comes with the king of swords or reverse the roles however what you need to but that's what it feels like and they could be competing for your attention or you just might be feeling stuck as to whether or not to and you don't even necessarily have to be in a, an official relationship with one of them but it could just be that you're battling between whether or not you want to choose comfort versus adventure versus newness versus exploration and that sort of thing and so that's kind of the issue here is that you don't know what to do six of wands could be that you are marveling or like relishing the attention that both of them give you aries <laughs> are you the devil <laughs> yo <laughs> okay the more I look at this, the more I'm, like, understanding what's going on. <laughs> or <laughs> to my understanding, at least. So, love triangle, right? That's what I keep on reverting to. The devil talks about a master, like a puppet master. And I was like, who the fuck is this puppet master? I don't think... Because I didn't think that it's this, these two kings because they're upright. Like, they don't see manipulation here. And then it dawned... And then here... It dawned on me because you like the attention. You like the attention that they give you. And you don't, you have to make this choice, even though you're running away from having to make this choice. And it's because you're the puppet master. The mic drop. <laughs> Damn, that's crazy. Okay, so Aries, you can't have the best of both worlds, okay? <laughs> Um, it really feels to me that you are kind of manipulating the situation, dragging it out longer than you need to, to avoid a decision that you have to make. And I feel that you are trying to indulge in having the best of both worlds with these two people, whatever, you know, they, you want what this person provides and you also want what this person provides, but you have to make a decision. You can't have both because it's not fair to them. It's not fair to be led on. It's not fair that they are puppets and that you, they are willing to do anything for you and yet you are playing them. I don't think that's fair. Um, I really don't think that's fair, honey. <laughs> I don't think that's fair, Aries. So I think that the big issue for you is that you got to make a decision and you got to cut out those strings and let them be their own person and not continue manipulating them or leading them on or just doing whatever it is that you're doing. You can't continue running away from this conflict, okay? You have, there's, you have to make a choice. You either choose the King of Cups or the King of Swords, okay? You can't be going back and forth based off of your mood, okay? You got to do something. You know, you can either go with what feels comfortable and what feels secure, or you can go with what feels adventurous, but you can't go pinballing back and forth, okay? Because it's not going to help anyone. It's going to be a very empty victory. It's not going to help you or anyone else, and if anything, it's going to hurt everyone at the end of the day. So, Aries, please take this in mind, okay? Just do what is right and what feels right um intuitively not just physically and in terms of like literal pleasure um don't place so much importance on your own pleasure if it comes at the cost of the manipulation of other people so keep that in mind i think that's what the transformation uh is referring to is just like a need to transform the situation a need for the end of a situation for newness um that sort of thing so aries i hope you enjoy i hope it resonates hope it helps in some sort of way let me know if it does i would love to hear your feedback in the comments down below share it with your friends family loved ones or anyone who needs to hear this message subscribe hit the bell notification to know when i upload my videos and if you want to purchase a personal reading with me you can do so at uh, sinfulpluto.com if you want to find me on social media you can do so on twitter and instagram at sinfulpluto <laughs> that being said i'll talk to you later bye